welcome to Film Companion South. In this episode of FC Reco, we're going to be talking about this book, The Film That Changed My Life. The subject goes, 30 directors on their epiphanies in the dark. Uh, now just think about it with a dirty mind. It sounds a little, you know, in the dark, an epiphany. But then film does that to you, no? If you've read the reviews of the American film critic Pauline Kael, one of my favorites, you, you'll see that all the books have very suggestive titles. When the lights go down, kiss kiss bang bang. Movies have that kind of sensual quality. You step into the dark to have a one-to-one -one experience. Now this book is about directors, but even for the viewer, the audience, the film can be very hugely transformative in a way. Uh, I remember watching this movie uh, which starred Jack Nicholson as the protagonist. It's called Five Easy Pieces. And I remember really connecting with it. I was just in my late teens and this guy must have been maybe in his late 20s or 30s. Uh, but I remember really connecting with it. It was a very transformative experience because there is some alienation. I was in a phase where I was feeling a little alienated from my family and things like that. So this whole movie just kind of connected and, and lifted me to another level. I was sitting in Chennai and this person was somewhere in the US but suddenly it was like somebody had built a bridge, you know, where you could miraculously, you know, transport your experiences across back and forth. I'm sure you all have had transformative experiences with the movies as well. Uh, in fact, in the comment section, I would love to hear about this movie that you saw that really you connected with or had a transformative experiences with or changed your life. But this book is special because it's a bunch of filmmakers talking about the films that transformed them. You have some not so famous names. You also have well-known names like Richard Linklater and Gurinder Chadha. And uh, Gurinder Chadha actually talks about Pura Bar Pashchim. Now don't laugh. When I saw that she was talking about this film, I was like, wow, what did she find in this film that transformed her? But you should remember that she was an Indian who grew up in England in the Pashchim of the, of the movie. So you kind of have this, uh, you know, this, this connect happened with her and she recognizes that it's not the most perfect movie, that there's a kitsch element to it. Here she says, yes, on the face of it, it's very brash and very silly. Uh, there are sequences on the river Thames when they're all doing the twist and it's cheesy and over the top. But underneath it, there's a wonderful kind of yearning quality about what is culture and the perils of living in the West and the dangers of what could happen. Now, this to me is a wonderful reminder of the fact that you know, you can't keep going after classics always to redefine your movie experience. You know, sometimes something very trashy and cheesy and whatever could be mocked by everybody else will end up speaking to you in a really personal way. And you can't control that because it all has to do with how you're built and how you're responding to a movie. And if Gurinder Chadha is responding to Pura Parpashyam, I respect her enough to not pretend to kind of, you know, go after this highbrow movie and really talk about this movie as something that she connected with and something that transformed her. Now let's see what Richard Linklater has to say about Raging Bull. It made me see movies as a potential outlet for what I was thinking about and hoping to express. At that point, I was an unformed artist. At that moment, something was simmering in me, but Raging Bull brought it to a boil. See again, you're talking about a movie striking somebody who was having these in a very formative stage and saying, okay, I'm going to transform you. It's like this magic wand that says, okay, now I'm going to give you the stuff that's going to complete you. And uh, that's amazing when that happens. And uh, you know, on the face of it though, if you look at it, you're not really going to connect Richard Linklater who made the Before Sunrise movies with something like Raging Bull, right? But that's the amazing thing. You don't have to be exactly that kind of filmmaker. You don't have to be like Martin Scorsese. You can just be whatever you are, but you can still connect to a particular kind of movie and it can have an impact on you even if you're making very different kinds of movies. And that's a very beautiful thing about this book. Another really interesting part is when Danny Boyle talks about the movie that changed him, which is Apocalypse Now. Again, it's a little difficult to see the connection between the two of them. And this is one of my favorite passages from the book because it shows how a movie, even if it is perceived as flawed, can still be a great movie. So Boyle says, that's the whole point of it, why it defies categorization, because it is deeply, deeply flawed and that's its nature. They've gone on to perfect films since then. There are perfect films, but I wouldn't nominate them as my favorite film of all time. This would be it for me. People say it's deeply dissatisfying. The conclusion of the film is deeply dissatisfying that this hocus pocus philosophy at the end is nonsense. But it seems to me they do hit nerves. Even nowadays when Brando talks about how they chop off the arms of children who've been inoculated, there are moments where you get a glimpse of Pol Pot and you get a glimpse of that. Some people call it popcorn intellectualism. I love that phrase, popcorn intellectualism. 
but I found and I still find that it stretches my mind really. It's an experience. One thing I look for in a book or a film book or whatever is how much passion there is in it. Uh, whether it succeeds ultimately or not is a different thing. But you know, I just love to see how much passion it has. That's the high of a film like Apocalypse Now and that's the high of a book like this one. As the editor of the book Robert K. Elder says, movies are not just movies, they are mirrors of ourselves our society and our dreams, even if we are not quite ready for them. They make us laugh, cry, ponder our humanity and escape from it entirely. Also for a few, movies make them want to go out and make more movies. So I hope some of you watching this are among those who want to go out and make more movies. All the best for that. That's the end of this episode. See you soon in the next episode of FC Records and keep watching Film Companion South.